So, Angari, I'm so pleased uh, to have this opportunity. It's lovely to meet you at the Ross. <laughs> and it's nice to sit down with you and uh, talk about your um, career and ambitions. Uh, especially for the clean energy in Africa. Eh? Yes. <laughs> so let's start with a general part. Yes. First, uh, <laughs> yes. how do you see things in Africa? And right. then we come to your career. And uh, so uh, let's start. How would you define the clean energy challenge in Africa? Um, that's a very, very good question. And it's lovely to be here. Uh, it's such an honor to also win this award. Uh, in terms of the clean energy challenge in Africa, um, I would say I'd use two words. I'd say there's a lot of potential. So potential is is one of the words I'd use because we have so much sun, so much natural resource that um, we can literally power over all of Africa on renewable energy. But um, it's also challenging because there's a lot of political issues around it. There's a lot of uh, financing challenges around it, and even just getting people to understand the technology is difficult now. Uh, slowly people are, are slowly starting to embrace it. Uh, but given how much resource we have, it should be our go-to. We shouldn't be looking at coal, we shouldn't be looking at um, any other energy that is non-renewable. We should be looking at renewable energy um, to sustainably power Africa. So I definitely think it's both challenging, but lots of potential. But do you see a change happening yes. in, in, uh, yes. in Africa? Certainly. I think from when I uh, came into this industry in 2008, when renewable energy was still very new and very novel and um, very, like, mysterious you know people really wondered what are these things we're putting on roofs or what is this energy that's powered by the mm -hmm. wind um to now we're slowly seeing even government policies changing i think even an example in kenya is last year we had a new energy act brought in no, sorry in 2019 uh, with a new energy act brought in which embraced renewable energy which has not happened before so i think um it definitely is slowly changing uh, I'm really proud to see that change and to be part of that change. And I think people are realizing that renewable energy is the way forward um, rather than trying to go with any other energy source that um, may not be renewable. So it's, it's how we can be independent renewable with renewable energy. So it comes to the mainstream in Africa also. Yes, exactly, energy. which is fantastic. And yes. even some countries like Kenya have embraced it to a large portion. So like in, uh, I think in, in Kenya we have over 90% renewables um, in our because grid. You have, you have a lot of hydro, eh? A lot of hydro and a lot of geothermal and as geothermal, well. Geothermal, yes. Geothermal as well, yes. yes yeah, but right. we do have quite a bit of wind and a bit of solar as well, which is fantastic. So it's good to also see the, the wide breadth of renewables being embraced, not just one technology, a few different types also being embraced, which is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, looking at Africa in general, I mean, there, there is a big diversity in yes. countries. Yes. Uh, there is a big diversity in the in the consideration of the resources that each uh, country has. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you think uh, that um, the this what we call the clean energy transition, transition how we're going to become more of a collective aim mm. in uh, in the region? I think. Um, there's one thing that we need to, to look at, and it's how do we make renewable energy accessible to even the common man, I think, or woman on the ground. So it's so far renewable energy has been very expensive and very up there, and um, the perception has been that it's it's expensive and that mm -hmm. it's, it's out of reach. But that's not true. We know that the cost of energy has really come down over the last 10 years. So now getting that to the everyday person who um, can now afford a small pico solar system or some sort of um, wind system at their house that's how to make it a collective aim to make it a more affordable um, and also to just educate the general masses around it so that people really understand why um, it's better to use renewable energy than any other source such as biomass or anything else um, it definitely is just education is the key to it to make it a collective aim and the, is this happening? I mean, uh, slowly. <laughs> um, I think, like with anything, trying to get into the the base of the of the, the of kind of the people, the really on the ground. So getting to remote areas where there's no energy, um, and explaining to them why solar is so good, or why wind is so good, or why any renewable energy source is really is good. Um, it's is a challenge, uh, but I think slowly it's it's working, and there are uh, people doing it and doing the good work to to get people out there to know more about it. Um, so definitely there is, there is a lot of work happening on that, and I think mm -hmm. it is progressing well. And when you talk about uh, you know, young pioneers and, uh, and activists in clean energy, mm -hmm. where should they focus their efforts in, oh, in wow. this period? 
That's a big question, Atheris. Yeah, that's, that's a really a big, big question, question because yeah. uh, um, there's so much that we can do. I think, one, there's not, we don't only need technical, so we do need technical people on the ground to help put in the systems and um, to help kind of make sure the renewable energy is disseminated across the, the continent. But also we need creatives to tell stories about renewable energy. We need um, people to take videos and films that will educate the people about um, clean energy. We need everyone to embrace it. We need doctors to put renewable energy on their clinics in rural areas. So we do need um, young people across the breadth, not just in technical engineering roles, but across the breadth to be able to embrace the whole uh, picture about renewable energy. And so anywhere that someone can tap in, I'll just say, um, even if you're a banker, you have a financing um, element to renewable energy. Even if you're a lawyer, there is a legal component to renewable energy. So I think we do need a lot of the young people in these different fields to come into the sustainable energy space um, or renewable energy space and really embrace that because that's what will make it um, kind of embraced by all the youth, not just one one small se sector yeah. of technical yeah. people. Yeah. So I saw in your CV that you studied also renewable energy. Eh? Yes, I did. To tell you the truth, uh, you were the only candidate that studied in renewable energy. Oh, really? Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I owe that to my mom, actually. Um, I wanted to do engineering uh, when I was in about 2008. And I wasn't really sure which renewable, which energy I wanted, which uh, engineering course I wanted to do. But I didn't want to do the typical mechanical, electrical engineering. I wanted to do something really interesting. Um, and I was lucky enough to go to Australia, to University of New South Wales, which is another pioneer um, academic institution in renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a course on solar and renewable energy and the different technologies. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, and at the same time, my mom was reading a book on uh, the next four revolutions of the world. And one of them was renewable energy, which was in 2008. So I decided to take a bet on it and it worked out. So here I am, <laughs> uh, I want to say 12 years later, uh, having studied it, really enjoyed the course, um, gone into the industry and embraced it. And uh, now I'm working in that field, which is fantastic. And have you seen uh, a transformation happening uh, in your community with uh, in, yes. these, uh, in these years? Yes, certainly. I think um, when I first heard about renewable energy, um, I heard about it because uh, my, my father had just built my grandmother a stone house. I think before it was a, a mud hut. And so they had just m made this a stone house in our rural um, home. And uh, the, the house was very cold. It was very like there was no electricity in it. And so for us to be able to charge phones in the house, my dad installed a, maybe a small panel. I, oh, I mean, okay. maybe the size of a, an A1 piece of paper on the roof. And uh, I didn't really understand what it was at the time. I was like, okay, how is this one little panel on the roof uh, um, helping us charge energy, uh, charge our phones and also power our television um, at that point? And I was like, this is really interesting. It actually changed the, us wanting to go to my grandmother's house more because now we had technology and we were able to connect, keep connected to the world outside. Um, and so from then, when I think about that small panel, which at that point was super expensive and really new technology, to now when you can have a whole solar system on the roof um, and power a whole home from, from it, I think it definitely has trans transformed and changed. And the prices come down, technology has gotten better. Um, so I definitely have seen a change in my community um, in the last 12 years. Yeah. So, and you have an experience in uh, multiple domains of sustainability from what yes. I saw. So you, <laughs> yes. from green buildings to wind power, to <laughs> off-grid solar, yes. to clean cooking. Clean cooking, yes. So how are these different elements uh, coming together in the modern energy system? Um, so I'll, I'll explain also how I went through all those. Yes. Right? When, I, when I studied renewable energy, uh, my first job out of university was with a, re a, re a real estate firm. And you, typically real estate, uh, was not sustainable, but it was slowly transforming to green buildings. And one of the key elements of green buildings is renewable energy. So I was tasked to um, manage some of the Australian government, uh, federal government buildings um, and make them more sustainable. Because in Australia, the government is the leader in environment and in sustainability mm -hmm. more yes. than the, yeah. the, the private sector. Um, and so we had to manage a few buildings that had renewable energy on them. And then they came to a point where the roof space on these buildings was not enough. So they needed to find the next level of renewable energy, and that was wind. And how were they going to purchase wind? They were going to have to find some PPAs or some sort of aggregation um, to get all their buildings you know, powered by a wind farm. And so I also led that project. So I helped aggregate a few different players, including the Australian government, to take, off, off, off take um, power from a wind farm. 
Uh, and so we, we did that project in, I think it was in 2004, uh, 2014, 2015. Uh, and then when I moved back home, so I'm uh, with this company, they opened an office in Nairobi and they, because it's a technically real estate company, it's not a renewable energy company. They, when I moved back home, my role became more real estate rather than renewable energy. And so that's when I went into green buildings. So um, here, getting sustainable buildings and getting buildings that were green was very new at that time. Mm -hmm. And because I worked for an international real estate firm, people were now coming to us to ask, how do we get our buildings sustainable? And I was like, oh, I can tell you. And that's how I ended up in green buildings for a bit. Um, and then I worked with them up until 2018. And in 2019, I switched roles. So I wanted to go back more to very technical renewable energy, uh, more technical re renewable energy role. And that's when I started working for the NGO HEVOS, um, where I- How long have you been working? So I've been working since September last year. So it's about a year, one year, one month. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to get more into actually create building systems for off-grid communities and systems that um, will help power people, uh, enable people to have access to energy for them to read and have lighting and, and all that. So uh, sort and of mini grids? Yes, uh, yes, mini exactly. Grids, so, so mini grids, yeah. but also more innovative than mini grids. So trying to, like we're right now working on a project uh, to do with blockchain technology. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, I saw that. Enabling, That's very, very interesting. <laughs> thank but, you. Yeah. Enabling people to trade energy between themselves because if I can't afford a solar system, but my neighbor maybe has a large system and they have excess power that it, you know doesn't get fed into any grid because it's off grid, goes to waste. Why don't I just buy it from them for a small token? Um, and I know they would be willing to sell it to me too because they have a, 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 a new source of income coming into their household. So we're now in building that technology and that infrastructure to be able to enable that trading between small players um, without using a utility. And that's where the blockchain comes in. Um, so the blockchain technology just helps us do that automatically without having to um, get a big expensive utility to come into play. Uh, and then one of the other elements of that is um, the biggest use of energy in a household is heating and cooking. So that's where clean cooking came in and clean cooking. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, clean cooking jumped in because then uh, people started using electric pressure cookers in their uh, mini grid system instead of using biomass or, or firewood to cook what our traditional foods would be, such as the beans that we cook or the potatoes that we cook. We can cook them faster and for less uh, money and also not have the burden of having to go out and collect firewood. So that's where clean cooking came in. So that's the kind of the transition of my career. Um, but in terms of the bigger energy system, uh, I think it's everybody lives and works in a building. So that's where the green building side comes in. It comes in and energy, 40% of the energy we use in our globally is used in buildings. So even the same thing here in Africa, it's actually a bit higher. It's about 45% um, of all the energy we use is used in buildings. So why not ensure that that, build, that energy is sustainable um, and so that's where I come into play. I'll help either be renewable energy or use appliances that are more um, efficient, I would say, um, for them to, to work better. Yeah. And on the mini grid, the story can also do have in mind that it can be, let's say, at the, at the bigger scale. Bigger scale in terms of, uh, you know, taking a village, a whole village. Or, yes, yes, So exactly. they have different sources there. For example, I'm just trying to think how wind also could be could used. Be used. Yeah. So right now, um, and it's very small, it's very small scale, but definitely the dream is to have, let's say a whole village running on a, on a wind farm um, or using excess capacity from a wind farm nearby and being able to power that. Um, that village. So, that, so it is in the aim of the, it is of in the aim of the of the yeah. projects that we are working yeah. on. Um, at the moment, it's yes, it is much bigger scale than we, than we actually currently use. Yeah. But the more that we get people on um, electricity, the more that we get people using um, renewable power sources, then the demand will go up, and then we'll be able to use those bigger systems to power the villages and the small towns. Yeah, than, because it yeah. it remains one of the big. Uh, Stories, I think, of the of the of this decade of the decade coming is the yes. the the, uh, the energy access yes, the exactly. people that are done and, and exactly. the the larger part is in is in sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, and it's uh, true because in in uh, in Africa we have in, like in Kenya we have uh, two hundred seventy well two thousand seven hundred gigawatts of energy available on the grid, but only fifty percent of people or sixty percent of people have access to the grid. So we have excess capacity, but we don't have enough people accessing the grid to actually access the power. So when you look at how much we have, we're making more than we need, but it's because people are not connected to the grid, and that's one of the key challenges: the access of energy. That's where we're. That's a big key part as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, that's yeah. great. So you know that you are the inaugural winner of the Revolutionaries Award. It's such an honor. That's it. It's amazing Steve to hear Sawyer that. Memorial Award. <laughs> big eh? shoes to fill. Very big shoes to fill. But uh, it's such an honor. So what is your aim, having <laughs> got this? Uh, um, uh, well, my, my aim with this award and also with the visibility that comes with it is to show that there are um, innovative projects in Africa. There is great potential. And there is young people working in this space that are making a difference. So I want to really shed light on that, shed light some, on some of the projects that we're working on. Um, and also let people know that there are technical people who do great work in Africa um, in this renewable energy space that we don't always need to also always import because a lot of the projects that are done here are imported. Um, we've imported the manpower, the technology and all that, yeah, but we can yeah. actually do a lot of locally sourced um, technology, locally sourced manpower um, and still achieve a really good project. And I think that's what I really want to show as well. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so it has been a great pleasure. Thank you so much, Adira. It's really nice to, to meet to, you. To chat with you <laughs> and to award you the, the, the certificate <laughs> in the name of the jury, as I told you at the beginning, and uh, we'll be very happy to see you also in the future yes. being a big ambassador for renewables. Yes, certainly. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of the jury, of the Revolutionaries Award, of the Steve Sawyer Memorial Award. I hand you this certificate as a recognition for your valuable contribution to a sustainable development in Africa. <laughs>